Look, I get it. Not all editing can be sexy transitions and motion graphics and all that stuff. Sometimes you need to get the effect done. And I've been harping on people for years to save time by learning shortcuts, learning the features of Resolve. So in today's video, we're going to dive into Resolve and I'm going to show you the pros and cons of using compound clips. Yes, they're sort of like a wrapper, like a multicam clip, but they hold multiple video and audio tracks. They can clean up your timeline and I'm going to show you how I like to use them, so hopefully you can save some time editing in the future, or, you know, right after you watch this video. Anyway, welcome back! If you're new here, I'm a moto vlogger who delves into other stuff too, and I like to show people how the sausage is made, as it were, and my favorite editing tricks. So we're going to dive into Resolve and get started. I've got two examples here, both using multicam clips, and I've already done a tutorial on that. Link below! But really, I've got two cameras in the first example and three cameras, including my GoPro Max 360 camera in the second example. And I have a great video already done, a couple of them actually, on how to edit in Resolve with 360 cam footage. So if you want, take a look up here. I think that's the corner. And you can go watch that. But come back afterwards and we'll continue with this. <laughs> But anyway, in our first example, we've got an effect here. We've got an edge wipe, and you can see if I play through, it's a very smooth edge wipe. Now, this requires two transitions to work because if I delete the bottom one, and then I try to play through, it pops in. You can see that, right? So if I hold the Alt key and drag the transition down and then remove the original, then if I play it through, the second one pops in. So by having this combined with two transitions, now it's the right effect. That works fine for the edge wipe, but when you have something like a smooth cut, we'll get, uh, we'll get rid of the top one here. You can see that this footage on the left just pops in. If I move this over to the top and get rid of the bottom one, guess what? Ta-da! The right-hand footage pops in. But here's the kicker. Here's where the compound clip is going to come in handy. If we look at, yeah, see that footage on the left just looks weird, right? It's not doing the job properly. So I will hold control and click on both backspace key on Windows to get rid of them. Now we have no transitions. Now, here's a problem you're going to run into. First of all, the audio and video are connected here. So we want to click on this one clip with our left mouse button, which will select both the audio and video, right click and click on link clips to unlink them. Now when I click away and click back, it only selects the one. You could create a compound clip with the audio, but I wanna keep the audio for something else. What I want is the video. So if I select both video and I right click on either one of them, I can come up here and say new compound clip. You can give it a name and hit create. Now if I try to drag our smooth cut transition onto it, you'll notice it only uh, starts at the beginning of the clip. It won't let me do the cross between the two clips. That's because this compound clip doesn't have handles. Handles are nothing more than extra frames that are used by transitions to do the transition. And if you have a one second transition on a 30 FPS timeline or frames per second timeline, then you're gonna need 15 handles or 15 extra frames on either end of your clip to do that one second transition. Let's dive back in, I'll show you how to fix this. So we will control Z to undo until we're back to our two clips. Now, if I control shift Z and redo, what I can actually do is click on the compound clip and then right click and say, decompose in place using clips only, it'll bring you back here. If you've done transitions, it can get a little wonky, but that's how you undo a compound clip. So what we're gonna need to do is select both of our clips, drag them up one, making sure that we still have four zeros there, meaning we're not moving anything. See how it's minus and plus? We wanna make sure it's zero. And then with both selected, we're just gonna drag left and Alt mouse wheel to zoom out, move the timeline over and click on either one without clicking anywhere else. And it'll make sure both are still selected. We can drag this out. We've got an extra second or two here, that's fine. We just need 15 of them. So we're gonna select them both again, right click, new compound clip, hit create, and then we're gonna zoom back in. And if I go to the end of this clip and cut it back off there, drag it to the end, 
Now we have the same frames we had before, but when I drop this back down and add the smooth cut back in, you'll notice that now when I alt mouse wheel zoom in, it's now across both clips. So this is the transition we wanted. And now that it's got our render cache in place, check this playback. Both are very smooth. Both left and right clips are very smooth in how they do the smooth cut. And that's about it in a nutshell. If you wanna stop watching, go ahead. But if you wanna learn more and some of the things you can't do with a compound clip, keep watching. Back in Resolve, I've got a multicam clip with three cameras, the GoPro 10, 12, and my Max. And you can see this looks like something. It's not great. I know I want these two camera angles over here, and I want, well, I want the Max over here, but I can't show the Max over here because I have reframed it here in Resolve using the Reframe 360 plugin I showed in another video. And even if I edge wipe, like before, it, wow, that's really weird, right? It did some weird stuff. What we're gonna need to do is nest a compound clip inside of a compound clip. And even if I copied the attributes from the adjustment clip onto the main clip, I would still have this problem because even if I come in here and I wanna change the zoom a little bit, you see it does weird things. And I get this is kind of a one-off use case. It's an example of something I do fairly frequently, but a lot of things that you apply in an adjustment clip when they're kind of tinkered with a little bit are gonna try to do this. So special effects and things are gonna really start to play weird. Let's get back in Resolve and I'll show you how to fix this. So the first thing we wanna do is get rid of all these edge wipe transitions. And again, this clip is linked. So first thing to do is unlink it. And then we're gonna select our video clips and move them up one, stretch them back out like we did before, okay. That's great. Now that everything is in place, the first thing we need to do is select our adjustment clip and the 360 camera footage, right click, new compound clip, boom, done. And then we can actually leave this one alone. We wanna keep the extra frames for what I'm gonna show you in a second, but we're gonna bring these two back down. And now we can go to the start of where we wanna show things. And if I change the zoom to like 0.75, now it retains the framing and it looks good, right? as good as I'm gonna look. The other thing we wanna do is change our crop so that the three angles are on screen the way I want them. That's looking good. So now we're ready to have this uh, come on screen. So we're gonna grab our three things, one of which is a compound clip, two are the other regular clips. We'll right click, new compound clip, boom, done. Now we can drag down cut off our edges there. So now our clip is in place. We can bring our edge wipe in, get it lined up, alt and drag to make a copy of it. And now that the render cache is complete, we can play it back and we got a nice smooth playback. Look at that. Oh, that's nice. That is pretty slick. So now in our last example, we're using a slide transition. I want top, bottom and top so that they come in and slice and dice like Dallas in the 1980s but it doesn't work that way. So what we need to do first is unlink this clip and then we can move these four up. Then we take our adjustment clip and our main clip, stretch them out, right click, new compound clip, boom, done. Then we drag it back in. Okay, we can bring these down if we want. And since the Hero 10 is on the right, we want to Alt drag to copy that. And then we wanna change the size of this Move it over, add a little bit of crop to it. That looks good. Now that the render cache is done, we can see our three clips show up nice. So we were able to use our compound clip to create that nice slide in effect. And if you wanna make it look extra nice, Alt and click on the video before it to select just the video clip, drag it, if you have the magnet icon snapping turned on, it'll snap to the end of our transition here, and we can grab our handle, drag it to about 15 frames, and then render cache is done again. We play through, it, the bottom one fades out, pretty cool. So that's the examples I got for you, but there are some caveats, so let's go into Resolve and take a look at those. All right, so we have our compound clip, and we go to our media pool, it's over here on the left, if you don't see it, click media pool. 
and I want to use this in a future project. So I wanna drag it to my power bins. If you don't see power bins, click on the three dots up here and you'll see show power bins. See, I hit it and then I bring it back. But if I go in here to 360 stuff and I say, drag it in, you'll get this message. Compound clips cannot be put into the power bins. Womp, womp. And again, if we right click, we can decompose in place using clips only. See, it kind of got, it got a little bit wonky on us. It didn't do too bad though this time. But here's another one. If I control Z to put that back in a compound clip, here's something else we can do with the compound clip. You can right click on it and open in timeline. And then it'll show you everything in here and it'll let you stretch it out. So if you forget to add the handles before, you could add them here and then go back into here. And if I Alt Y, move things out, I can actually select this compound clip and come out further than I could before. See, if I go back into compound clip five and I shrink it and I go back to demo material, now it, it doesn't go that far. In fact, it's not showing at all until here. So we've stretched it past its limit. So you kind of have to be careful with that one. But generally, if you leave them alone, once you create them, you're okay. See, it's back now. So you can modify the things in, inside the compound clip without actually having to modify your timeline. And if I really wanted, I could select all this to clean up my timeline. I can right click and say new compound clip and boom, I've got one thing that I can alt and drag to duplicate and there's no audio on it, but it thinks there's audio. And then you'll see here, if I zoom in, the render cache will actually render out the transitions inside of the compound clip. So you can use this if you have multiple scenes, you can create compound clips for each one and keep them tidy and you can trim them frame by frame if you want. Well, that's about it for compound clips. I hope you found this video informative and enjoyable to watch. If you did, boop the like button. And I hope you're having a great day. I hope that you can save some time editing after watching this video. If not, maybe you'll click on this video that YouTube thinks you wanna watch next, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.